What's up, everyone? Fleet Muffin, as you're from Holistic Songwriting. Welcome to whatever this is. We're talking about five beginner mistakes that I see all the time happening with your guys' songs. How do I know about these? Well, I do a live stream every single week on my private Patreon channel, so you can go there and follow me, you know, become a patron, um, and send in songs for feedback. Number one is structure or storytelling in songs. This is something I see going wrong all the time, and I think it's probably the biggest mistake I see people make. And the reason for that is really, I think, because it's just not a very sexy problem, you know, uh, writing a groove that is a little bit groovier, a little bit more danceable, or writing a melody that's more singable is something we all understand instinctively, and we all talk about that. And if we w watch movies, that's what everyone seems to be talking about. It's just not a very sexy thing to think about, you know, structuring your hooks and your song in such a way that it is really accessible and easy to understand. That's really what it is all about, I think. Um, storytelling, or especially structure, is all about functional songwriting, so that each section is functional, we understand what we're actually hearing right now. So what I hear most often in beginner songs is that I'm not really sure where I am right now in the song. Am I listening to a verse? Am I listening to a pre-chorus? Am I listening to a chorus? And making sure that those um, are set uh, functionally so that it's really easy to understand where we are is really, really crucial. And I think it's one of the most important things we do as songwriters and as arrangers, and it's one of the most underappreciated arts in songwriting. If this is one of your problems, uh, I really suggest you check out my book, which I'm very proud of, uh, my bestseller, The Addiction Formula. So go check that out because it really explains how to take care of this very problem. Uh, I think, honestly, every songwriter should read this. I wrote it in such a way that I think really anyone could profit, profit from reading this. There's almost no theory within this, so it's a very easy read. And most of you are probably going to know a lot that's in the book already. And I didn't write it with that intention to really teach you anything new. What it is, it connects all the things that you probably already know with one simple formula to make you understand why you're actually doing what you're doing. And that, I think, is really the power of the book. So if you come out of it thinking, oh, you know what? Now all of that makes sense. I've been doing this and this and this for such a long time. Now I understand why I do these things, right? So if you go out of, uh, of, the, of the book with that experience, I'm already happy I've done my job. Number two and three are both actually concerned with sound. Um, a lot of beginning productions just don't sound the way they're supposed to. So let's talk about that first, about production. There's really two schools of songwriters. The technical side, that is producers, DJs, and those kind of artists. And then we have instrumentalists, people who started out on guitar or piano or whatever with their voice. And now they're starting to write um, music like that. And then there's a very much smaller uh, group of lyricists that I'm not really going to cover here. Um, writers who started out as poets and then so thought like, you know what, I could probably set this to music. First talk about the, um, the instrumentalist. So the person that is a musician first and foremost and a technician. The issue with those people tends to be that the productions just aren't strong enough. They don't think enough about sound. They don't think enough about the mixing. They don't think about how things are going to blend. They don't think about frequency spectrums and arrangements and all that kind of stuff. And that typically results in a song that just doesn't sound good. And sound is incredibly important in songwriting. If um, I always say people come for the sound, come for the sound and stay for the story. So if your sound isn't working, if the sounds that you're using within your song aren't great, people aren't going to stick around to listen to the whole thing. You might have the greatest story, the greatest hook of all time. Your songwriting might be the best that the world's ever heard. If your sound is not right, if it doesn't sound like a professional song, people are going to turn off. So figuring out production for yourself and whether that's uh, in the home, in a home studio that you build yourself, which I, is always what I recommend, doing it yourself is always the best thing to do here because it's really not that difficult. Or hiring someone to do it for you or having a friend who's really good at that stuff, who enjoys your music and the two of you can work together. Whatever you do, you have to take care of this somehow. You need someone to produce your music. You need to figure out sound for your music. If you want to know how to do this yourself, you can also check out one of my courses right here. This is the Geek Free Music Production Workshop where I teach you in, I think it's like nine and a half hours, it's something crazy like that, how to become a producer. And it really covers everything you need to know, including what to buy, what not to buy, um, how to use the software, how to get creative within a DAW and all that stuff. So if you have no clue about how to do any of this stuff, the course takes you from start to finish. Next on the list is the other side of things, the producer slash DJ uh, faction, so to say. 
and their biggest issue really seems to be performance. So they are really good at figuring out um, how to make things sound good, but they don't quite know what to write in the first place. So they might have some really great sounding stuff, but none of it really matters because it just doesn't, it's not written very well and it doesn't really capture our attention. So we might in initially be drawn to it, but after a couple of seconds, we're like, ah, oh, you know, this is kind of boring though. Yeah, so it might sound interesting, but if there is nothing else to it, well, it's also going to fail. So uh, typically producers and DJs have a, a big issue with uh, structure and, and functional writing. So they don't quite understand that. So again, that's where I would refer you to the book. And the other side of things is, again, as I said, the performance, making sure that each individual part is performed well. And what I see a lot of DJs and producers doing is they quantize everything. They pitch correct the shit out of everything so that at the end of it, you have something that might sound perfect, but it's lost all life. Finding great performers to work with is probably key for you. And uh, also working on your own performances. So if you're a pianist, work on becoming a better pianist, work on that micro timing, knowing when to play a little bit laid back. If you're just, if you're a rocking chair, sometimes you're laid back, sometimes you're laid forward and your timing is all over the place. That's not gonna work. You know, you need to be so, you have to have that figured out so much that you're able to know when to lay, play laid back and when to play with a little bit of drive, a little bit before the beat or when to play on the beat, you know? You have to be able to do that kind of thing before you're able to, to use takes as you have recorded them. Otherwise, you're kind of forced to quantize and pitch correct everything because it's, it's just not, a gun, not gonna sound right otherwise, right? So find some great performers and work on your own performances and that goes for your main instrument, which is hopefully piano or guitar, because those are harmony instruments and um, working on your vocals, especially. Vocals, especially the, as a producer, extremely important that you're able to sing your stuff because ultimately it's gonna be sung by someone, um, whether it's a drum groove or a bass line or the main vocal line, someone is gonna sing that stuff and the more singable it is, the better. Number four is beginners don't listen to what they've written. And this kind of sounds like an obvious one, but man, it's something I really hear going wrong all the time. People don't listen to their music closely enough. I hear stuff like avoid notes and harmony that just doesn't work and transitions that are just really sketchy, um, lyrics that are just really corny. I hear that all the time. And yes, there's a certain amount of subjectivity that comes along with that where, you know, one person might find something cheesy, the other person might not. But I mean, I mean there's just so much of that going on that it, I begin to question whether people are actually listening to their own music. Is the storytelling good? Is it going somewhere? Is it dramatic? Is Are the hooks good? Are they simple enough? Could I simplify? Could I make it stronger? Does the, Is the groove good? Could I make it a little bit more danceable? Are the lyrics meaningful? Are they saying something, you know? Um, how do the different sections connect? All that stuff. How's my outro? You know, is it interesting? Do I have a good intro? Do I capture people's attention right away? How's the sound of it all? Having all of these questions and asking yourself all these questions is just really, really important. And if you have something where you're like, this doesn't make any sense theory-wise, but man, I really like it. It sounds great. By all means, go for it. That's the kind of music that we're really all looking for. The kind of music that doesn't feel like we've heard it a million times before. The music that doesn't feel like it's based on music theory. What we really want to hear is kind of music that feels fresh and new, that doesn't use music theory. So when I write, uh, and I have a Bachelor of Music, and I'm a theory geek, you know, I love music theory, I find it really fascinating. But when I actually sit down to write, I use very, very, very little of it. Like when I write a jazz song, I might use more of it, sure. But when I write a pop song or a rock song, really, I sometimes analyze what I've been doing, like after the fact, but as I'm writing the, th the stuff, I really try not to think about it because I find that if I do, my music comes out generic, formulaic sounding. And that's really not what I want. I want to create something that's special, unique to my song, something that doesn't feel like I've heard it a million times before. Learn to trust your ears. Those are your most important instrument. And by the way, if you want to learn how to transcribe um, music and do that kind of thing and figure out what it is that you're actually playing, you can do that with this course. Uh, here, the 30 day ear training challenge. Just be warned, it's my most challenging challenge for sure. Last on the list is focusing on quality instead of quantity. So um, this leads to a lot of songwriters not finishing their songs. It leads to them overwriting their songs and just being generally unhappy with the way their songs turn out. And this is obviously a problem because, you know, if you're not finishing your songs, you're never going to release any songs. And I've had uh, email conversations with songwriters from Holistic Songwriting that told me like they've written 500 songs over 20 hours of music 
and they never released anything. And that is just, that just kind of breaks my heart. It's the saddest thing to have a voice and never speak, right? That is the saddest thing. You do want to finish your songs and you do want to release them. Obviously, you want to be proud of them first, but you're only going to get to a certain level of quality if you write a lot of songs. That is the only way to write songs. So I often say here on the channel, you should write a hundred songs and that's when you can start calling yourself a songwriter. There's this old saying between screenwriters and that is a lot of people know how to write beginnings to stories, but not a lot of people know how to write endings to stories. And the reason for that is that a lot of screenwriters, they start out a book, they write an intro that's really great, and they've done that a lot of times, but then they stop halfway through. They never finish one of their screenplays. And so that's the issue. They don't know how to write endings because they've never done it. The easiest way to get around that is to just write a lot of songs, especially in the beginning. Just write a lot. And don't think about, think so much about the quality of your song. Think about quantity. The quality is going to come all by itself because, you know, you'd be a weird human being if you were to write 100 songs and the, the song 100 is still the same quality as song number one. You automatically get better because we almost always optimize. Our brain is just made for that kind of thing. We're there to, you know, pattern recognition, all that stuff. Our brain is made to make things better. That's just our human nature. So automatically, I promise you, if you can write 100 songs in the next year, you are going to be a much better songwriter by the end of that. Get your ass out there, start writing songs. There's really the, that's really the best advice I can give you. Don't listen to me, don't listen to any other YouTubers. Don't buy a books on songwriting. That stuff, yes, it can help if you have a little bit of a basis. And I consider all of my stuff to be like 100 songs plus material. You know, you should have your first 100 songs written before you get any of my material because you should kind of figure out what songwriting is and kind of how it works in the beginning. So you get an intuitive sense of how things work before you get the rule behind it and you understand why you're actually doing those things because you really want to train again you want to train your ears you want to know how these things work intuitively and then later on you can learn the rule and you can learn what things are called or oh this is an interval and i guess this is called a chord but i kind of knew this already i just didn't have a name for it right so that's kind of how you want to go about this um and if you do this if you just work on finishing songs and this becomes your main goal just finishing as many songs as possible you're going to combat um, not finishing those songs in the future. So writer's block becomes less of an issue. Uh, you're going to combat overwriting, which is the other end of the spectrum, is when people are too afraid to just let their songs go and they tend to like go back to it and just change this and change that and add another part onto it. And at the end, it's this mutant, this song mutant. That's something uh, that you definitely want to avoid. So again, focus on writing a lot, lots and lots of songs and making sure they're, they're all finished. That's all you need to do, really. Don't focus so much on quality. Don't focus so much on um, making sure it's the best thing that's been, ever been written or that it's original or whatever. All that's going to come naturally. That's all going to happen by itself. You don't have to worry about that so much. So that was my top five beginner mistakes that I hear you guys making. Let's go through them one more time. Number one was structure slash storytelling, really the addiction formula, not putting things in the right place um, so that they pop out and have the impact that they're supposed to have. In other words, functional songwriting. Number two and three were all about sound, uh, respectively about production and performance, making sure that your songs actually sound good as well because the songwriting is just one small part of it. And especially in today's um, songwriting, um, especially with the modern pop sound, we have, I would say it's like 70% production and 70% sound and maybe 30% um, the actual writing. So focus on sound. It's really, really quite important. And unfortunately, more people are going to listen to your song if the sound is great than if the songwriting is great. So you could have a, a poorly written song that is produced really well that sounds great, and you're going to be able to convince people that you're a great writer. But if you have a great, really well written sound song that is that doesn't sound good, that's not produced well, that's not recorded well, it's going to be really difficult to convince anyone that you're a good songwriter. So um, I'm not saying don't become a good songwriter because obviously I am a songwriter and I still think that's for me, that's the most um, fulfilling thing to do, and I love the songwriting part of it, so I'm not going to tell anyone not to focus on that. But please don't forget about those t two things as well. Production and performance are really the bread and butter of uh, songwriting. You know, it's your, it's your best friend. Number four was not listening to what you've written. Make sure you keep your ears open and listen to any, for any mistakes. Listen for anything that's not in line with your vision for your song. And number five was focusing on quality instead of quantity. Get those songs out, you know, write as many songs as you can and write a lot of endings to songs. In other words, finish those songs. 
So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you like this video. Uh, also check out my Patreon link if you want to send me songs or ask me a question. Link is in the description. You can also uh, buy a cool shirt. How's that? Or take a course, because I have a bunch of courses on my website, holisticsongwriting.com. Uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and stay fetish.